Hope you're doing well, Colin. Um, doing well. How are you doing, uh, Stefan? Yeah, really good, thanks. Really enjoying the show so far. I mean, I think this character is such a brilliant kind of creation. It's such a, John Sugar's such an enigma. I feel like I can get to know him, but only so much of him, only what he wants me to know. Right. Um, this, this might sound like a bit of a wanky question, but I'm going to ask anyway. Love wanky can, questions. I'm full of them myself, man. I might throw a few your way before the interview's <laughs> over. Go on. Uh, can characters be an enigma to the actor portraying them? Can you also not understand us? Very good. Sure, every character, this might sound wanky uh, in response, but every character is. Every human being is. Like, we all go to our graves, mysteries to ourselves, you know, and we learn things about ourselves as life unfolds and as the environment and the people we love or the people we don't love or the people we work with, our partners, you know, kind of reveal aspects of themselves to us and then reveal aspects of ourselves to ourselves and how we interact with each other you know so absolutely I mean when I read this character there's there's a certain particular mystery at the core of who John Sugar is that's reve revealed as the show unfolds but um I still wouldn't say I, I totally 100% understand who he is or anyone I've ever played really you know you're just in the sandbox always trying to continue the unearthing and, and discovery as you go, you know, never really arriving at any particular place where you're 100% certain of what you're doing, you know? I know so obviously actors, you know, love to do sort of research and make sure there's a real kind of commitment to authenticity. But when you play a private detective, do you almost have the license to throw away the rule book? I know you can do extensive research into the world of private, de private detectives, but it's such a cinematic creation, so woven into the kind of fabric of storytelling. Are your reference points almost other films and TV shows? Yeah, I mean, and the character John Sugar himself is obsessed with film um, and obsessed with old film and obsessed with, you know, film that was shot in black and white, like going back that far, that many decades. Um, and I think he's somebody who learns about the human condition through observing film, not just the world that he lives in, because he knows he has kind of a narrow viewpoint in the world that he inhabits. So he wants to learn about the whole panoply of the human experience as it's presented through cinema. Um, and for me, the character... The character of Los Angeles as a city and the people who inhabit it, you know, it, it, all spectres of, of, of the community in this town. It was a much in, more interesting character than John Sugar even was. If I just, I, he, I, I, he was just a keen observer. Like if I just focused on that one thing of John Sugar's observations of human beings and the world around him and the fact that his observations of the more dark aspects of the human experience, human trafficking and, and kidnapping and violence and still didn't diminish his sense of hope. Like he, it, it was unusual because there was this contradiction where he, he is a archetypical noir character as a private detective, but he, he kind of lacked cynicism. And, and usually with noir, you know, characters, there's a hard boiled aspect to them you know they've been kind of jaded a little bit they've been broken down by the duplicity and deceit they see and the greed at the heart of the human experience as they judge it and that wasn't the case with sugar so that was an interesting kind of take i mean obviously you mentioned he's a real kind of film aficionado i just got me thinking what's your relationship to film like of course you love cinema that goes without saying but you're so busy working all the time are you able to keep up with new releases and occasionally kind of sit back and watch some of the classics at home yeah all the time i mean i was just in new york doing um doing this other show and there's a few great theaters in New York, Film Forum and and um, the Metropole and a couple of great theaters that played, like they had they had the Robocop director's cut a while ago and then they had um, Paper Moon a while ago and they were playing all these older films, you know, some from the 80s, some from the 70s and even going further back. You know, I do get time. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do all these years later. As I said before, you know, I was a fan of film before I even thought of being an actor. And so, you know, if I ever stop being an actor, I'll still be a fan of film. That's kind of the lens through which I experience the whole thing as an actor, even it's just loving film and loving stories. And and now that I get to see behind the veil and be part of the process of it, it's, it's still a dream that I get to kind of, uh, you know, experience every time I go to work. It really is. I've kind of got a bit of a childish or not childish, but kind of a, a an outlook that reminds me of what it felt like when I sat in the cinema for the first time and I saw E.T. I don't, I don't love watching the things I do, but going to work with a crew and bringing a story to life and working with writers and directors, it's just, it's so much fun, man, even when it's not. I mean, yeah, did you see, um, did you see Perfect Days yet? No, I've not seen that yet, but I'm desperate to catch it. It looks so good. It's one of the most <laughs> fucking beautiful yeah. things I have ever seen in my life. Oh. Well, look, I'm it was Oscar nominated and there was a this yeah. is a shameless story, by the way but there was a little great moment at the Oscars this weekend where Danny DeVito and Arnie stood there making Twins. a joke about, about being Batman villains as well which yeah. got me thinking 
Shameless segue. Uh, we have obviously the eagerly anticipated Penguin uh, series coming later this year. This character was always my favourite from the DV DC universe. So I'm very kind of excited. But what what can fans of this world and that character like myself expect from, from oh, this show? Tons of violence, abject darkness, and a man a man at great struggle to try and claw his way to the top of the power vacuum that was created at the end of the Batman film. You know, with the with the death of Carmine Falcone you know there's a there's a power grab in Gotham now um yeah it was it was it's dark man L Lauren Lefranc wrote uh, with her uh room of writers and she was the showrunner she she wrote eight extraordinary episodes of story I mean just really really bold stuff I couldn't believe that it was got as dark as it gets so <laughs> so that's what to expect yeah it would be a hard R, I think, if it was hard R. So dramatic if it was in the cinemas, you know? Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Colin. I'm going to go watch Perfect Days soon, I think, as well. Uh, I enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it. I hope you do. Thank you very much. Take All care. All the best, Bye. man. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!